He was serving in the legislature, but collecting a paycheck from the city. Find out what Wendell Williams has to say about an investigation into his time on the clock. This is News 3 at Noon with Sue Manteras and Mitch Truswell. One man, two jobs, and a formal investigation that could cost a Nevada assemblyman his job. Now, for the first time, Wendell Williams is speaking out about allegations he falsified time cards, saying many people handled them, but he made no reporting errors. Jeff Yeager joined us live with our top story from Kerry and Martin Luther King, where community members showed support for Williams. That's right, Sue. We're here live at the Clark County Community Resource Center, where earlier today a small group of people not only gathered to show their support for Williams, but they also showed their utter disgust for what they called a scandalous newspaper art, rather a slanderous newspaper article. Now, tucked in the back of the crowd, Williams stood and listened to the concerns of community members at today's rally. Many of his supporters feel the recent allegations are an attack on his political character and also because he's black. Now, no matter what allegations are brought up, Williams tells me that he will continue to proclaim his innocence. I've never falsified time cards. All the work that was given to me by the city of Las Vegas, I still stand by the fact that I did the work and completed the work for the city of Las Vegas. I followed the process in 2001 and I followed the process in 2003 just as it was given to me. I now Williams says he's innocent because the way that the city collects the time cards that there was absolutely no way that he had access to change the times on those time cards. Live at Cary and Martin Luther King Boulevard, Jeff Yeager, News 3. Sue, back to you. All right, Jeff. Williams says he is not the first city employee to also be a member of the state legislature, but he points out he is the first to be questioned about his time cards. A local doctor who went public to explain more about magician Roy Horn's condition could face disciplinary action. UMC officials tell News 3 an announcement about neurosurgeon Lonnie Hammergren's comments will be addressed later on today. It's been nearly three weeks now since magician Roy Horn was attacked on stage by one of his white tigers. At this hour, Roy remains in critical but stable condition. Last week, Hammergren gave several interviews in which he revealed graphic details about the surgery performed on Roy's brain. Roy's relatives and his employer were angered by the comments and say that violated his, pro his privacy. Dr. Hammergren says he commented on Roy's operation to correct misinformation that had previously been reported. He's accused of shooting and killing a nine-year-old girl in a shooting. This afternoon, Pasquale Lozano could learn his fate. Closing arguments got underway yesterday in his death penalty case, but continue in about an hour. The defense told jurors the prosecution did not prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Lozano killed Genesis Gonzalez. Three witnesses also took the stand saying they saw a black man not a Hispanic man near the scene of the shooting. A clinical psychologist was also brought in to analyze some of the witnesses, including Gonzalez's sister. A local pastor goes before a judge this afternoon for sexually assaulting a local mother. Pastor and counselor Bob Hugh is scheduled to be sentenced today. He has been charged with fondling and having sex with a female patient while he treated her last year at the West Valley Counseling Center that's here in Las Vegas. A prosecutor says the woman is a Las Vegas mother in her mid-30s who suffers with a personality disorder. He was allegedly on the run from police and during the car chase he crashed and police say killed a local woman. Six 16-year-old David Gatlin faced his charges of second-degree murder, burglary, and evading police. Today, he was formally charged in court. Police say last month Gatlin was caught trying to steal a car. Cops started chasing him. Then he ran a red light at Alta and Jones, killing 57-year-old Roberta Stroh of Las Vegas. Former Clark County Commissioner Lance Malone back in the San Diego courtroom today for a pretrial hearing. He's accused of conspiring with local strip club owner Michael Gallardi and others to bribe three San Diego City Councilmen. A day after. 500. It took the death of a Las Vegas teen before something was done about a dangerous and busy intersection. This afternoon, new crosswalks are in near the spot where a car hit two 13-year-old girls about a week ago. One of those girls died. People living in the Southern Highlands area say more needs to be done. The girls were hit while crossing Shinnecock Hills near Tucci Street. There still is not a crosswalk at the exact spot of the accident, and there aren't any stop signs. Folks there say they are afraid tragedy could happen again. We're going to have another tragedy. We're going to lose another child. 
And right now we can't afford to do that. We shouldn't have lost one at all. I think these kids are actually going to be the answer to this problem. I think as, as long as they have a voice and we as the adults can help them get their opinion known, we're going to get a change. And I plan to be a thorn in their side until something goes on. People in the area have placed a paper crosswalk as a visual reminder for drivers to slow down there. Kids and parents say they'll be out at the crash site every day voicing their opinions until changes are made. We may find out today whether a new casino will be bigger than originally proposed. The County Planning Commission will decide whether station casinos will be allowed to build a 300-foot tower on a piece of land at West Charleston and 215 near Red Rock. A meeting was held Tuesday night so neighbors could see sketches of how the new higher tower would affect the view for people in Summerlin. The Planning Commission already gave the casino approval for a 100-foot tower. And speaking of views, that also is decided by some of our pollution and the dust going around. Yes. Sometimes that can affect what we see in the valley. Yes, and I think perhaps some of that's on the way. Let's check in with John Fredericks in the News 3 Weather Center for the answer. John. Well, we've got a shot, uh, Mitch and Sue. Thank you. Back up the strip from our Mandalay Bay cam, where right now it's just all blue skies. And uh, let's see if we can do the Segway Serenade. There you go. All right. Wonderful blue skies and a current temperature reading out at McCarran of 83 degrees. So we're only one degree lower than we were yesterday. So it might get a bit warmer than I uh, earlier anticipated this morning. But temperatures will start coming down. Uh, in fact, the winds are already beginning to shift now out of the east northeast. They're going to start bringing in some cooler air from over the next couple of days. They're also going to bring in some of that W stuff. Yep, the wind coming up. Of course, we'll have your complete forecast of Frederick's Fact and a live studio audience we're going to introduce you to in just a little bit. Sue, Mitch. Okay, thank you, John. Are you a risk for... You know the saying, it's time to fall back. This weekend we'll be gaining an hour with the end of daylight saving time because we're going to be setting our clocks back. And since the clocks change every six months, safety experts say the batteries in your smoke detectors should be changed as well. Statistics show that smoke alarms can double your chance of surviving a home fire, but only if they work. The National Fire Protection Agency says that 20% of all fire alarms are not working properly because of worn or perhaps missing batteries. And sometimes dust, too. I learned that from our firefighters who came and looked at our alarms. And so you got to clean them off every once in a while as it's well. It's the first thing you do. You know, right. the batteries on the remote go out. Uh -huh. Go look for some more. And you <laughs> pull them out there. That, it happens. That's right. So you're going to do that, John? Check your batteries on your fire alarms. Absolutely. And, of course, you never take them out of the television remote to replace with those. You just always yep. have a new. stash of new batteries and keep them in the freezer. They last a little longer. Oh, way. I didn't know that. Yeah, just okay, keep them I'll up do there that. in the freezer. Yeah, that, Sometimes uh, mine go bad. It does make a little bit of a difference. We're going to show you our currents and our little time lapse. And uh, Mitch is talking a little bit about the brown cloud. We do have some increased uh, levels of particulate matter because the air has just been stagnating out there for several days, that will change. 83 under beautiful blue skies and just 18% relative humidity. Barometer now falling at 3001. Please welcome, how many? About 35 fifth graders, right? From Green Valley Christian School, is that right? There they are, you're on TV, you're on the, with the light on over there. Oh, how exciting. Now tell me something, kids. Uh, three of you have, it looks like some of you have white uh, shirts, and another have red. Why is that? Yell it out, tell me. Do you have your choice of red or white? Is that the deal? You can wear either? Oh, so they give you a choice. That's very nice. Okay, so let's come, you come over here and you come over here. Come on, you two, come on over here. Come on, I won't bite. Come on. And my dog won't even bite. All right, come on over there. There you go. There you go. What's your name? Kelsey. And? Christian. Okay, very good. You're going to help me here in just a second, all right? Okay, I want you to stand right over there for now, and you stand right over here, okay? Don't hurt yourself, all right? I don't have insurance for this. All right, at our uh, Wells Fargo WeatherNet Center at uh, North Las Vegas, Craig and Martin Luther King. Good looking kids, huh? Aren't they? Yes. Thank you. All right. <laughs> He's kind of from the producer. Oh, yeah, we're great on time. I'm down to two already. 88, the afternoon high today at least. Uh, we might get up to about 90, but we're not going to set any records. Now, yesterday we did actually set a record high of 92 out of McCarran. Uh, 77 is the average high, and our sun sets at 5. Get around over here a little bit. Let's see. I don't want your face getting cut off. There you go. All right. You know, these kids, they're, they're both 5'11". Can you imagine how tall I am? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> air quality is... Uh, 
We've got some moderate readings of particulate matter. <laughs> Other than that, we're doing okay, huh? Nice do. <laughs> All right, now you guys, we're going to fly in the numbers and you can point them out for me. You guys just point these numbers out. You're going to look over here. One of you look over here. Now you look on that one and you look on this one over here. Yeah, over here. There you go. Now you, why don't you guys just start pointing some numbers out for me, okay? Can you do that? You just point, there you go. <laughs> Albuquerque, good. That's 72. How about Chicago? 50, well, let's uh, put your hand down. Let's get Chicago in there, shall we? Oh, that's 84. Well, you're closer to New Orleans. That's okay. You yell, it, yell it out. Just yell it out. You can do it. Come on. Man, this is your time to shine. All these talent coaches are looking at you right now going, man, we've got to make her a model. She's beautiful. All right. Give them a big round of applause, shall we? All right, kids. Have a seat. See, it's not as easy as it looks, okay? Uh, that's why they pay me the big bucks. All right, there's your jet stream right there, and we've got a cold front swinging on through, and we've got a big storm system over the lakes, and we've got snow up in New England. Snow up in New England. Snow up in New England. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> we got snow up in oh, This is Massachusetts. There you go. Uh, kind of hard to believe. Here, we've got record high temperatures, and they're marching along to the tune of a different drum. All right, let's go ahead and come on back here uh, live and show you what's happening. Yes, yeah, snow up in New England, warm across much of the rest of the country, and some showers now moving out of western Washington. That's good news because they've had flooding rainfall and another warm day across much of the south central part of the United States. And as uh, Sue and Mitch just reminded you, be sure and set your clocks back one hour Saturday night when you go to bed. So Sunday morning you get uh, an extra hour of sleep. All right, we've got about 30 seconds to get you the five day and wonderful gifts for the Fredericks facts. 88, a bit breezy by the late this afternoon through this evening. The winds are going to increase through tomorrow, bringing in that cooler air and hopefully back in the upper 70s, but it's locally windy on Saturday. Still in the upper 70s on Sunday, low 80s on Monday. All right, hey, our uh, friend Christian Reese Lassen over at the uh, Forum Shops in his beautiful gallery, he's going to be uh, over there unveiling a new painting he's got. He wants you to join him from 2 to 4 on Saturday. We're going to give you this book if you have the correct answer to the fact, and you can uh, qualify for a, an actual full-size frame Lassen portrait. And I've got other gifts for you. If kids know the answer to this, don't yell it out, please. Japanese people do not have one of these. One of what? Now, obviously, there's more than one correct answer. What's the answer I'm looking for? Dial carefully. Got a round of golf for two at the beautiful Siena Golf Club and two tickets to see the incomparable Paul Anka over at the Hollywood Theater at the MGM Grand. Kids, give yourself a big round of applause. Good looking kids. There you go. All right. We'll send it back to Sue and Mitch. Thank you, John. Well, are you...